Hello guys, today in this video I will show you how to make your view inertia and Laravel project multi-language. So people would be able to choose their language between, for example, English and my own Lithuanian, and then some translations would change on the page. So this example is based on View Starter Kit and a well-known popular Vue.js package, Laravel View, by Francisco, who works at Laravel Core team now. So step by step. On a database level, in the users table, we have a column called locale, which is by default English, so whoever registers has the English locale, but can change it later. Next, translations are stored in the typical Laravel Lang folder, EN and LT, for example, with dashboard or sidebar, there's one translated, sidebar is translated, so enough for the demonstration, but I didn't go deeper to translate all the project. Next, we have a global middleware to set the locale on the backend in the Laravel level. So we have with middleware in the Bootstrap app file of Laravel, and we have set locale middleware, which gets the locale either from user database table, from user session, or from get preferred language, which is from the browser. And then it is set as active language on the backend. So that's why, for example, for this user, for Elvis May, if we refresh the database, our new user has the locale of LT. That's why LT is active here. So that's the backend Laravel part. Next, with inertia, there's a middleware called handle inertia request, which is used to pass some global variables to Vue.js. So for example, if you want to show auth user, this is available, but also here we add locale. And this is done very similarly how the middleware does it on the back end. So locale is taken either from database table or from the browser from preferred language, which then later makes it available as page props locale here. We'll get to that Vue.js part in a second. Next on the front end, we install that package that I already mentioned in the beginning. So npm install and then for setup, we have this with Vite. So in the view starter kit, we have a file resources JS app TS, not app JS. So this is where we import the plugin and add this to the setup. And by the way, I will put all the repository on GitHub and we'll make it public and the link will be in the description below. And also according to the docs of that package, we need to add that to define config in Vite configuration like this. This is exactly what it is done in our project. It's in Vite config ts in our case, and we have that at the bottom and then also import it on the top. And then in the Vue.js component, how you access the translations, then there are two options. If your translation is a static text in template part of the component, then you just use $t, then provide the key sidebar.platform, which is in the sidebar PHP file of the lang folder, sidebar.platform references this value, which then appears visually here. Or another example is head title. You can also pass the value with $t to other components like head. But for example, some parts of the view components are dynamic, not in template, but in script. So for example, here in the script setup, we have navigation items. And in here, you cannot use $t anymore. Instead, you need to use one of the two options, either trans or w trans. In the official documentation, the difference is this trans just can translate the message and w trans returns a reactive object to watch any changes and set the new value. In other words, probably in most cases, you should use w trans as I understand. So this is how it is used in the app sidebar or for example, in the dashboard view, also we import w trans and then use it in the breadcrumb item. So for example, now if we translate that dashboard PHP file to ABC and we have npm run dev running in the background, as you can see, ABC appears here in the dashboard breadcrumb item. Finally, let's talk about selector component here on the top right. This is a separate Vue.js component. In the Vue.js component of the starter kit called app sidebar header.view, we import locale selector and then use it like this on top. Inside of that locale selector, this is, as I told you, a Vue.js component. We're using the components from starter kit, but also we load that from the plugin and also load this 
from TypeScript definition powered by Laravel Wayfinder, recent addition to Laravel family for those who like TypeScript. And then down below we have the list of locales, also selected locale as a variable. And then we have a button to first show the active locale, but also drop down menu items with V4 from locales. And then at click we have select locale, which is a method here. We have router visit, passing the data of the code of the locale that has been chosen. So this one or that one. And then that set locale controller, what it does is just updating the database table with the locale. You potentially may have more validation here and then we return back and then the whole loop of actions that I've shown a few minutes ago starts with another language, setting everything on the back end, on the front end and making it accessible with the package as $t or wtrans function. So yeah, that's the overview of that project. As I said, the repository will be in the description below. What do you think? Would you have done something differently? That's my usual question at the end of the videos. And by the way, if you're not familiar how Vue.js starter kit works, on the courses section of Laravel Daily, we have separate section of three courses on three different starter kits that come with Laravel 12. One of them is Vue.js. So I will link that course in the description below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.